Hi, I'm Gemma from Savages. I'm Faye. I'm Aisha. Hi, I'm Jennifer from Savages, and this is what's in my bag. I see that you're holding Run the Jewels in your hands. Did you happen to see them on Saturday? Do you know what? That was the reason why I picked it up. Yeah, I saw them and I really enjoyed it. I thought they were brilliant. I'd heard a few tracks off the record and really, really enjoyed it. So I went to see them at FYF and then... Oh, so, yeah. I love that track title. Close your eyes and count to fuck. <laughs> like it's a pillow torching. Where the fuck the warden? And when you find them, we don't kill them. We just waterboard them. So I've got this guy. One of the best records of all time. One of my favourite records when I was at school. I don't have it on vinyl. The creepiness inside me, I think, came from that. Listening to Richard D. James. The first thing I found, which I was really pleased, was the Arvo Part documentary, 24 Preludes for a Fugue. Arvo Part is an Estonian composer probably one of the most amazing still living composers. He's been a massive influence on me. And this documentary is really, really beautiful. I mean, this is a musician who didn't, who didn't listen to music or play music for a 10 year period to try and understand what he was doing. So he sat in silence for kind of 10 years and then went back to his work. He talks about every single note having its own character and having a relationship with another note. And he has a piece called Fur Lisa, where he's talking to these students and he's talking about each melody with its character and how it interacts. He's a very honest, real composer, artist, and it's an awesome documentary. While we're on films, I'm gonna show you this, um, Five Films by John Cassavetes is my favorite American director. And it's been for a long time since I'm like a young girl. Shadows, Faces, Woman Under the Influence, Opening Night. I like his films, but I also like the character, the, the man behind him, um, behind it. The way he managed to build a family and he was present. John pioneered another view of filmmaking, and I would just call it family filmmaking. He was there for his friends and who were playing also in his films and he was a real leader, he was very inspiring. Film is, to me, just unimportant, but people are very important. I think it's really rare to have people like that around now. He threw us all in together to be a family and we became a family very quickly. And we all cared for each other and we all, you know, it was, a, it was wonderful. Okay, so I've got a couple of books. Iron in Her Soul, a story of Elizabeth Gurley Flynn and she's one of the leading feminists and communists in America, where well, she was. And it's a story about her, and that sounds interesting. She's a rebel girl, a rebel girl. I've got some jazz records. I studied in the jazz section a bit too long, and <laughs> <laughs> jazz is my like, first love in music, and that's how I learned to play music, piano and sing. It just stayed with me. So this is some of my favorites. Uh, so Monks, I don't use Monks. This is my favorite record of him. It's Monks time. My favorite piano player of all times. We have Hon Honet Coleman, who died recently. Tomorrow is the question, a great title. Yeah, I mean, he, he really had great titles. Yeah. They all had, actually. Coltrane, <laughs> the ultimate, Love Supreme. I think if there was a god, it would be Coltrane, basically. To top the list, I picked a Nina Simone one, because she's, she's uh, the goddess if Coltrane's the god. <laughs> and this particular one, this is my favorite song of her, and it is uh, Black is the Color of My True Love's Hair. And I love that dress. Black is the color. Got two of the same artist, and it's um, Chelsea Wolfe. And this is her record, this, that has just come out. She's a, an American musician, and uh, I also have her um, unknown Rooms, a collection of acoustic songs, because the first piece that I saw was um, just her with a guitar and voice. That was the first video I saw of her. And it's very dark and very strange and very, very strong. Completely her own thing, her own world. And I've been listening to the songs that have been slowly released from this new record, and they're, you know, kind of doom, kind of very, very heavy. 
things, but um, just looking into all her musicians and to her writing and everything, she's just really, um, yeah, really impressive. <laughs> Okay, so I've got these guys, Terry Riley and Steve Reich. Again, childhood favourites. I love that cover, look at him. He's such a lovely dude. I met him the other day actually, and he was equally as lovely as he appears here. The book it chose is Cram's Sex Obsessions. I really like Cram and I really like his drawings of women. He's a man who was obsessed by big butts, like I am. There you go, you have a few. And he lives in France now, actually. There's a really good documentary about his life. He always represented himself sitting on top of butts of women. So it's like a calipish piece of reading, which is really good. <laughs> I picked up some fanzines just because I like the cover of that and I had a bit of a flick for it and it looks pretty awesome. It reminds me of being a teenager and loving fanzines. Like. So yeah, I picked those up. I also picked up this flyer, original um, punk flyer, which I thought was um, pretty interesting. <laughs> you can get your tickets in advance. It's not much in advance anymore. No, exactly, no, so I kind of thought that was, yeah. But anyway, a book about um, selected writings about love and death, which we're all closely connected to a guest, so I thought that was um, something interesting to read. I don't know this writer, Klaus Mann, at all, but the book sounds extremely interesting. Mephisto, about an actor who plays Mephisto in Nazi Germany. These two are connected, in a way. Frida Kahlo and this book, because I've been reading and getting into a, a painter called Charlotte Salomon. In the um, Nazi occupation of France, she was in hiding. In a year, basically the last year of her life, and she, she knew she couldn't escape from France. And uh, she painted 750 paintings about her life in one year. And it was all based on her family history, which was very dark because most of the women in her family committed suicide. She always played with whether she should commit suicide or she should make this work. And she put everything into this work to try and understand her family and the situation she was in, which was pretty dire. She reminded me very much of Frida Kahlo and, and kind of the painting of her life and understanding herself, but also of the idea of artists in very dire situations that can only follow their art to try and explain their situation. I was wandering around the electronics section and um, I'm trusting Kyle because uh, it was a stuff pick and I thought, actually, <laughs> I'd quite like to listen to that. It kind of grabbed me, I was like, yeah, let's do that. Um, it's uh, Nicola Calamri, uh, re repetitive juxtaposition. Yeah, his writing's quite small, so. <laughs> <laughs> Steel Band, Gemma's favourite. <laughs> I love Steel Band. I used to play in a Steel Band. Yeah, I was like one of these guys. I played that one. Yeah, it's cool. With my dad as well. It was really cool. Really, really big moment for me. And then I chose a little box from a cartoon. <laughs> to play video games. So that's Bimo. Bimo! It's a character from Adventure Time. It's absolutely psychedelic and Bimo is a little game boy. It reminds me of the first time we came to play in the US. We had a massive transformer for all the, all the gear and um, oh, yeah, yeah, we yes. named it Bimo. We left it in a venue. Oh shit. Well, I got it back. So Adventure Time. Suggest you to watch it, it's great. Bimo, is there a way for us to get in the game for real? Yes, of course, Jake. If I push this button. If I push this button. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. 